Hello, are you ready to do a watercolor painting today? That's what I'm going to do. Get your paints and brushes and let's go paint. Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. We're going to do a watercolor painting today and it's a painting from a photograph I've picked up from Western Montana. A photographer there, a very uh, nice gentleman named Patrick Clark who takes many beautiful photos in the area of Missoula, Montana and some of the surrounding areas. And uh, I'll uh, put his website on here uh, toward the end of the video. Anyway, we're going to do a painting of a scene of a fisherman out in the water there just fly fishing, and I hope you like it. So uh, I have a sketch, I have my photograph, and I have my uh, value map that I've completed. And I'll uh, overlay those on the video when we get started. Let me zoom in here and make sure our uh, camera's all lined up. I have to do this myself, so I'm going to uh, get ourselves all perfect here, hopefully. That's good and viewable for all of you. All right, um, go through the uh, brushes very quickly and the paints very quickly. I'm using a Sterling Edwards uh, palette here with uh, My Mary Blue uh, transparent watercolors in them. I have a set of Sterling Edwards brushes, a small bristle brush, a medium bristle brush. This is like a one inch and a one and a half inch bristle brush. I have a nylon uh, brush, a one inch brush and a half inch I have three uh, round brushes here, a number 12, a number 8, and a number 4. And then I add a couple of small riggers uh, that I like from American Painter. These are uh, a size 1 and a size 4. I may not use all of these brushes, um, but uh, I have those at my disposal when I, when I need them. So uh, we'll use those today. The paints, I'll uh, very briefly go around the palette for you. Here we have uh, My Mary Blue watercolors again. Neutral Tint, Cyan Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Ultraviolet, Crimson Lake, Garnet Lake, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, and Yellow Ochre. I have Cupric Green, and I have a Golden Lake, which is almost a duplicate of Raw Sienna. I'm thinking about taking one of those two out of my palette. Probably the Golden Lake will come out. Uh, my yellows are Limon Yellow and Primary Yellow. I have a Burnt Umber here and uh, I use a little Sap Green once in a while and I have a uh, Auvignon Orange and Primary Red Magenta and Stilted Grain Brown, very beautiful brown color. And I have a little bit of uh, light red over here I've added to my palette from uh, Grumbacher. So with that said and with the uh, sketch already on the paper. I'll tell you we're painting on uh, 11 by 14 Fabriano Artistico 300 pound watercolor paper. That's uh, 35 centimeters by 28 centimeters and uh, I think it's uh, I forget what the weight is in uh, I think 640 grams per meter squared is the metric weight of the paper. So anyway uh, I'm going to do this and uh, try to do a, a pretty close uh, approximation of the photo. I did add a couple of things to the photo using my artistic license to give it a little more depth. Uh, and uh, so uh, let's get started on this. I'm going to wet the sky area. Uh, you can see the sketch. If you want the sketch, uh, it will be on my website in the area where I post the paintings. I have links on my website for all, all of my YouTube videos uh, under a free YouTube's lesson uh, link and you can get all of the all of the videos there and beside each video there's uh, another link that will have uh, the sketch so uh, you can actually pick up the sketch there and, and download it and, and print it out and go from it. I'm going to put a little clear water here in the sky. I have a pastel pencil or pastel chalk here that I've actually put this uh, 
image on the paper with, so I think it will blend a little better with the, the paints and will not uh, turn dirty like uh, graphite does. So we'll see how that works today. I got that on pretty heavy. Probably if I were doing this not on a video, I would not have that paint quite so heavy, or not paint, but the sketch so heavy. I wanted you to be able to see it, so I uh, have uh, put it on heavier than necessary. So some of these lines may th show through, I don't know, uh, but it's not a big deal. This is uh, an exercise and it's, a, it's training for you, and, uh, and I hope you can uh, follow along, paint along with me, and uh, keep up. Um, the paints I have, I, I will not use all these paints. You don't have to have these paints. You don't have to have this brand. Uh, but it is a nice, uh, nice complement of paints that are truly transparent. The sky in this painting is, uh, in, this, in the photograph, which I'm working from, is sort of almost a, a, a burnt, burnt sienna. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can duplicate that and uh, have it a little darker at the top. So I'm using some burnt sienna here. You can see in my palette. And uh, let's just start up here and put in uh, this color. Probably need a little more, a little darker at the top. We'll let it bleed down and, and fade into a lighter color. Um, don't want to mess around with skies too much. Um, they will go haywire on you in a hurry. This is wet on wet. I put the water on, clear water on, and uh, I'm letting it soak and hopefully get this sky the way I want it here. It could be a little darker. There's a bright sun in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that in or not. Um, I may leave a space for it, but the uh, sun usually makes a uh, silhouetted scene, which looks beautiful in photographs, but sometimes you can't paint them that way in watercolor or oils because they uh, it just the, the trees in silhouette are really too dark. So uh, we'll see. I'll just put some of this here and let that set for a moment and uh, while I clean out my palette um, there's going to be a little bit of that color down in the water here um, I might as well just put a little bit of it right here and see if I can soften the edges a little bit and keep it get it ready for soften edges by just taking water and touching it like that and uh, we'll have that in there maybe a, maybe a little bit over here just to a little balance to the painting, a little bit of harmony. Keep it wet and soft down here, very soft. Okay, I think that's uh, about all we need to do for the sky right now. And I'm going to take my paper towel and just blot an area back here where the sun might be shining and see if I can create a nice clear area that will sort of let me put in some uh, orangish yellow in there after a bit. It may fill in since that paper is wet. The paper does, the paint does run, but we'll leave it like that and see how it goes. Maybe. All right. Um, this Fabriano paper is so good I can pick up paint off of it after it's down. You can Unless you use a very heavy staining watercolor, um, you can pick up these paints off the paper, and uh, this paper is very, very forgiving for that sort of thing. All right. Um, let's see. That's got some rough edges over there. I'm going to get this to the top. I want to wipe this off. I don't want that running back onto my paper. It will create a blossom of sorts if it runs. Let's clean that off the tape. If you notice, I uh, painted my backing board here with a gray gesso, which is a good mid-tone color that uh, will uh, help me deal with values, mid-values. If I want a mid-value, I'll make it about the color of that this backing board. I had a masonite board that I had not, I just varnished, but I put a coat of gesso on it to see how that looks. So 
hopefully that's going to be nice for you. Um, these mountains in the distance, uh, they're not really in the photograph. I apologize to Patrick uh, for putting in some mountains in his painting in this photo, but um, he did have some trees back there in the distance, but I'm since this is Montana and I've been there a lot of times, I'm going to uh, show you some mountains in the distance back there. Um, oh, hello. A little too much. Paper's still wet. Uh, you remember I, I wet this thing all the way down, so um, we're going to have some some runs maybe, but um, I can come back and touch this up later, but I want to put in something that looks like mountains with soft edges on the top of them back there. Uh, get that out of the way. That red is uh, the sketch. The sketch is really coming through there. A little bit over here and just we'll just leave it like that pick this up I'm using a one inch flat brush here um, I don't know if I'm gonna like the looks there or not but it's definitely looks like some mountains in the distance um, now this pastel pencil is not dissolving like I thought it would. Therefore, I'm going to have lines in this pa painting. So I may want to redo this painting. You never know what you're going to get to. You try some things. So I'm trying some new ideas here for you to let me experiment and you gain the benefit. All right, let's stop on that. Um, get my hair dryer out here and blow that dry. I'm going to turn my microphone off and I'll turn it back on in a second. Okay, I should be back online now with my microphone. That's, uh, that should be good and dry now. You can always test it with the back of your hand. Um, you have more oil on your fingertips, so don't touch it that way, but touch it with the back of your hand. And uh, if it's warm to the touch, it's usually dry. If it's cool to the touch, it's still wet. All right, um, these trees back here in the distance um, I think I'm going to start putting in some of those, pick up some, some of my yellows and greens. Um, in the photograph, they're very, very dark, as you might expect, uh, since they are, um, this is sort of a sunset scene, I'm assuming. Could be sunrise, I suppose, early in the morning. Get the fish out there while they're, before they're, so I'm going to put in some nice trees over here with just some soft brushwork. Uh, I'm using ultra blue and my my yellows. Uh, and I'll come back and put some darker uh, colors in there. Very loose, very abstract. Come down over this mountain. I cut sort of more overlap here like this and stick out. A lot of trees. Pick up some like purples. A 
these things come all the way down to another set of trees in here that are a little darker. Um, so that's using like that. darks in there. Uh, if you can't get it dark enough, I can, you can always pick up a little of this uh, neutral tint, which is uh, sort of like a Payne's gray. And you can put in some really dark values with it. So I'm just, I'm not trying to paint leaves and branches right now. I'm just trying to print a paint, sort of a mass of foliage that looks like trees. And what tells you what these are is what's on the edges. The outside edge tells you what is what this thing is. And as you look at it, your eye will fool your brain and say, oh, that's got to be trees. Couldn't be anything else but trees. So I don't have to paint every brush and, and uh, every uh, twig and branch and stick and leaf on these trees. When you paint impressionistically, abstractly, you can leave some very nice effects on paper with that. All right, let me stop and take a look at that. Back up a little bit. Look at it in reverse. Am I getting a nice and dark color there? Yes, I am. Um, an area that I left out here was this area in front of the mountains. There's another set of trees here that are they're further back and they're less distinct uh, but they're darker than the mountains that are behind them so I'm going to see if I can put in just a few bits of something here that look like trees in the distance still using this one inch brush I get stuck on a brush and can't get off of it sometimes but um, these will just sort of hide back in here and You'll be able to see them slightly, but just adds another layer of depth to the painting. They'll come over in this area. Um, something like that. Maybe stick a few other colors in there from darker colors um, toward the bottom. All right. Um, now we'll maybe even have another layer of trees in front of that if I can make it work. Let's put some back in here. These are so far away you can't really tell what they are other than you know they're some sort of tree masses back there. So I'm going to just carve in behind some of the trees that are going in front and show you some of those trees in the back there. All right. What's that looking like? Okay. So pretty much this paper is dry. We're pretty much painting wet on dry now rather than uh, wet on wet. See my mountains there? I have that red line. I'm not crazy about that. Um, can't really get it out of there, but I can probably come back over those mountains again and put a little more of a hard edge at the top and sort of disguise that a little bit, maybe. Let's see what this looks like here. Something like that, and then take our purples here, ultraviolets. Could have some snow out there, I suppose, even in the summertime. I've been at this, these areas in uh, June and July, and there's still snow on these mountains. So my problem is I'm getting close to the same value as these trees in front, and if I keep up with this, I'm going to have to darken the values in front. I'm going to just leave some markers there to make it look like there's some 
snow floating around back there, maybe on the, some of these mountains. All right. So I'll just soften some of these edges here, make it look like they fade into the trees in front of them. Hopefully that's sort of disguising that red uh, pastel pencil that was on top and it's starting to look like more texture in those mountains. I'm going to do the same over here on these other mountains on the left. Just sort of try to cover that red up. Leave a little snow in there. Something like this is what I'm trying to do. It's not dark enough. All right. Take a dry, wet brush and sort of lighten the bottoms here. Okay, and then just to sort of finish that off so we don't leave it looking confusing, if those two values, I'm sure those two values on camera look almost identical. So I've got to do something with these trees in front now, darken them just a little, or you won't know they're there. Change the color, pick up some Every time you put a layer in your painting like this, you're making depth. Photographer only has to be able to record the depth that he sees, that his camera sees, but as an artist, we can put more layers in. We can put uh, multiple layers on top of layers, and, and we can make this painting have more depth than it has in reality. See how that looks. Getting soft edges here because that's still wet there. All right. Um, that's a little better, I think. At least it's a little more defined. I got rid of a little bit of that reddish uh, sketch marks there on the top of those mountains. Left some nice uh, texture in those mountains. All right. Um, We've got another set of trees in here that sort of hang over and another set of trees here that come down to the, the bank back here. This is a bank. Let me see if I can, if any of that red will come up. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah. Not very well. I'm going to scrape some of that off so I don't have quite so much to contend with down here in the foreground, but it's, it's smudging. So this probably wasn't the greatest idea, but um, we are going to keep on moving here. I don't stop my videos and retake and redo them. I go from start to finish. If I make mistakes, if I screw up, I have to uh, let you see how I get out of trouble. Um, trees on the left side here. Let's put in uh, some other colors. I'm going to pick up some a few browns and reds here and uh, my, my burnt sienna and uh, Still getting greens and blues, but over here we're going to throw in some nice soft trees. They have to be darker than that, of course. I want this corner to be fairly dark. Um, but they're going to overlap on this mountain and they're going to overlap these trees behind them, so they have to definitely be darker or you won't be able to tell what they are. So let's just do that. Picking in some brown, some uh, burnt sienna, blue. That usually makes it gray. Uh, throwing a little green in there with it or a little yellow in there with it will give you some of the colors we need. Another tree in here. I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I put that tree in. Um, even some ochre. Yellow ochre is a good color to pull in. Ochre and uh, neutral tint or Payne's gray, whichever you have, make a good olive color. And so we want to put some ochres in here, even getting up into this tree. 
this this is going to be lighter because there's actually sun. I'm going to try to flick that sun through here and see if I can make it make this lighter on this side and darker on the other side. Pick up some darker colors over here. Very, very light brushwork. Just flick it wet on dry. Gives you some very nice effects out here at the edge. If you do it carefully, I'm just sort of stabbing and touching and letting the brush do the work. When you pull it fast, you usually get up with the dry paper underneath. It uh, leaves a very nice texture. Some people call that a rough texture. All right, so I'm picking up yellows, ochres, browns, getting some depth in there. These come down, there's another layer of green trees over this that come all the way down to here. There's a bank. I'm going to make this have a bank back here with some water um, that, that flows into this area with water. That way it's going to even add a little more depth than was in the original photo as well. Um, so I'll get on that in a moment. Let's sort of finish some of these out here. Um, a lot of, pick up some other colors. Try to mix these colors up. Don't make them all one bland color. You have to intermix these things. Putting in some yellow now. I just pulled some of that uh, primary yellow in. You can maybe see that starting to turn up in the trees here. Go back, pick up some of my blues, put another darker color under there. This is all just very abstract stuff back here. I'll leave some room for some trunks maybe back in here. We're getting closer. As we get closer to the foreground, I want to uh, start showing you more detail. Actually, this is middle ground, background. This is the middle ground. This will be the foreground here. So, um, but I want to start leaving room called negative painting. You've probably heard me use that term before. Um, and we can paint in some trunks here with trees that uh, will help you see the what's going on back here. I know there's a number of trees and just a big, big woods along the bank of uh, this beautiful stream. Darker down here. Pick up some yellows, pick up some ochre. So I'm just changing colors from sort of a blue to an ochre to a yellow back to blue. And every time I do that, put one layer on top of the other, I'm giving you more and more depth in this painting. Um, hopefully that's becoming obvious. Still these have to be fairly dark. I want the light and the center of interest to be down around where the fisherman is standing down here. So uh, I'm trying to keep it dark on the, around the edges as much as possible. Um, put in some really dark stuff down here. Let's see, I'll make sure I don't overrun my bank. There's the bank. Okay. Leave rough texture. When you just run the brush over that, you get some very nice rough textures. Okay, let's see. These others on the other side now are starting to you to pull those down. I'm going to pull different colors in there as well. Start pulling some of these yellows and uh, that sort of stuff in here. Um, ochres. Just using what's in the palette, basically. I'm not mixing up new colors all the time, but just sort of throwing in some lighter colors. And I'll come back and put some darker ones underneath it. Um, this area back here had some really nice dark greens in it. So let me see if I can 
put together a green. You make green with yellow and blue, right? So I have a couple of blues, I have purples, and I have two yellows and three earth tones, and all of those will make some form, some color of green. Um, ochre. Um, and to get it darker, I can always throw in just a little of this neutral tint that will bring the values down. Now see what this looks like here in this area back here. It's dry. It's got to be darker than that. So let's pick up some some of that neutral tint. Still, one inch brush. Nothing else so far today. They're bluer. Throw some more green in there maybe. And there's a, the bank is actually going to be clear down to here, so I need have a lot of filling in to do back here. So I'm going to pop in some really darks. The darker I make this, the more it's going to highlight the, what's around it. A lot of trees, a lot of trees. The bank. Let's see, let's make this very dark down to this bank and see if we can connect it with some lighter colors back in here. Throw in some ochre, if I can pick up some ochre, yellow ochre. I'm charging this with a second color. Once I put the the dark blue in, I come back with some ochre over it and, and let them sort of run together and you see these beautiful colors come out of it. And I'm not mixing a bunch of colors in my palette, um, I'm just letting them mix on the paper. Okay, that's the bank back there of, a, of this, the stream that comes this way and flows around here and back. So I've got a bank there and I've got the bank over here. Oh, I'm just pulling up, make this stick out just a little, Some. okay, very good, all right, so I have a very nice backdrop now for my, for my fisherman and what he's doing here in the foreground. Um, just maybe fill in a few of these whites back here. I don't want too much stuff. Throw in some uh, trunks by taking this brush and just vertically stabbing it like that. I'm ending up with some very nice tree trunks. Too much of it gets uh, looks contrived, but. Um, you can get by with certain amounts of it, and if it's in the right places, you'll make the, believe, the viewer believe you're painting a real scene here. And this is a real scene. Um, I'm just trying to bring it down to 14 inches wide, which is usually the problem most people have when they try to paint from photographs. If you try to paint everything that's in a photograph, you'll go crazy. You'll, you'll make your viewers work so hard they won't like your paintings, usually. Uh, you have to abstract it into many almost cartoon-like shapes, if you will. Um, it's the only way that you can actually get it down to 14 inches and still keep it making, looking like uh, it's a real scene. Otherwise, you make people work very hard to understand your painting. Okay, let's see, I think, I don't know if I have anything wet enough I can put in some scrapes or not, but you can sometimes use the back of one of these brushes that have a sharp wedge edge on them and you can scrape in some things that help improve the background. Um, even in here, maybe it's still wet. If you Get it just right, it turns white. Basically, I've scraped the paint off there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, if, it, if it's just the right 
uh, wetness, I will be scraping off the paint. If it's too dry, nothing happens. If it's too wet, it'll fill back in and close in over the area you just scraped out. So I'm just making some little marks back there to help it carry the illusion that that's, that's woods and trees and trunks and branches and so forth. All right. Let's leave that. That's still dry. I'm painting well and dry. There's a whole field of, almost looks like a wheat field here or something that's overgrown, sticking up into this area. Uh, comes down to the bank here in the foreground. Um, and uh, it sort of overlaps. This, this stream moves between here and slides this way and comes this way and around and out that way. So our fishermen standing right in a perfect spot to be catching fish that are coming down the stream. All right, um, I'm going to put some water in back here, wet, clear water. See if I can put in a little bit of the water right back here. I'm just sort of painting this top to bottom, back to front. Um, don't have to paint it this way. Um, you can paint it however you want, um, but I uh, sometimes like to, to do it this way. Um, Particularly since I'm painting vertically, uh, watercolor painters uh, many times paint flat, and to do that you have to have a camera overhead to make it look right on video, and I don't have an overhead camera, so I have to do mine vertically, and uh, I hope you like it that way because uh, it gives me a challenge for one thing, trying to work with paint that goes uh, sliding down the paper. Uh, but you can see how I deal with it and uh, may help you in your struggles with watercolor. I'm going to save a little bit of that paint I've got there. I'm going to come back now and try to get some, uh, make some watercolor here. That's the uh, color of water. Um, and start showing you a little bit of that back here. While that's just a little wet, pull it down. Not very. The water, if you know, if you've heard me before, water doesn't have any color. It picks up the colors that are around it, above it, or under it, and basically It's a reflective medium that basically lets you I'll save room for my uh, fishing pole there I've got to put in. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put some of these sky colors in there, building down a little bit of this brownish color. You can actually put in the reflections of the bank. If the water is not moving too much, you can actually reflect these colors down in the water by pulling down on your brush which is what I want to do back here. If I can get some more of that darker color. Pull it down just a little. Um, water is moving, so you can't show it as a total still water or you'll be deceiving reality here. But over here, it's starting to break up and move around. There's actually a little, um, looks like a rocky peninsula that sort of sticks out here that's just gray in color. And uh, I don't know if I can actually represent that very well or not, but I'll see what I can do here. Try that. A lot of rocks in there. But the water itself is moving all around. So I'm just sort of touching this with my brush to see if I can make rough water. Make it look like rough water. Pick up some browns and grays. It's actually really, really glistening. A lot of white highlights on this. Over here, it's starting to touch the, the bank. Um, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this reddish 
brown color here that's in the sky. Actually burnt sienna. Sort of flip a little bit of that in here. Now this is getting dry. I'm getting back to dry paper down here again. So it's starting to um, take the paint differently. Stop, get back and look at that. And if that looks like moving water, not too bad. There's a, I'm going to put some uh, like rock like stuff here. I don't know if they're heavy rocks. I think they're more like more bushes, but I've got a lot of bushes in here. I think I want to put some like a heavier bank there that will stand out and close this in a little more. Um, so let's just bring this down here, graze, move it over this way. And uh, probably not dark enough, but you can always darken. It's harder to lighten than it is darken in watercolors. You can do it, but it's uh, not as easy to do. Okay, I'll throw some of these greens in here. We actually want to show some of the reflections of the. Of the trees behind. All right, got a lot of white paper in there. That tends to be distractive, distracting. Um, so as these areas have dried off, I'm going to take just a little of this greenish color I have and sort of close in a few of these so we don't end up with a lot of white specks all over the place. I left those there on purpose just so I could let you see them. And if coming back this way, putting a little light glaze over it leaves them there, but they're lighter. Okay, so that area is not quite as distracting as it was. A um, little bit of still to grain brand. Let's see what we can do with this little bank area over here. I haven't changed brushes the whole painting, folks. Um, I hope you don't get tired of that, but. Um, I get started and sometimes it's just a nice challenge to see if I can make this brush do everything I want it to do and paint every style and every object. Picking up some uh, burnt umber with a little darker for the base of this and just pop in some things that look like rocks here maybe or uh, some sort of a bank to hold this water in. I need to make sure I don't leave it looking like it's merging with the, the grasses there. All right. Um, even over here, I'm going to pull in a little darkness under these trees. Um, whatever touches the bank should be dark. Uh, because anything vertical has to be darker than anything that's horizontal. So let's put in a few dark things here that sort of stick out and underlay the, the bushes here. So that was a little bit of uh, neutral tint in my, my greenish colors here that I'm able to pop in. All right, so that's, now that I've made that darker, you can tell that that's more, looks more like water coming around there now that I, since I've defined that edge, it didn't look right to me before. So this is gonna be some more, a little peninsula like sticking out there. So I want this to look like the stream is sort of coming this way and around um, that area that I put there that's supposed to represent this rocky set of rocks here. Let's see what I can do to make it a little darker maybe. Highlight on top. And I'm just using just a bit of neutral tint. There we go. So all that stuff dries about 20-30% lighter. So when it looks like it's too dark it's usually about right. Uh, I've got some whites in here that I want to get rid of. Let's put in a few darker 
things. It looked like there's some brush going on here, and this will highlight this rock below it. And uh, at a certain point, I stopped looking at the photograph um, because I'm reacting to what's going on here on the paper, and I don't want to make a bad painting because I'm focusing too much on the photograph. Um, so these little things will have things sticking up along the bank here. I'm just using the back of this brush to uh, flick in some little sticks and twigs and stuff. That needs to be just a little darker here maybe. And then get out of there. All right. How are we doing on time here? Can't quite tell exactly. We've been going probably 35, 40 minutes maybe. All right. Um, what's next? Um, I think maybe I'll work on these this areas over here. Uh, again, that's a light. Pick up some of this stuff on my palette. Clean it out just a little bit. And get. Uh, more paper towel here. Um, got a lot of sort of, uh, I guess it's a, this is raw sienna. Um, yellow ochre. Those two colors are close together. So a little yellow in there to brighten them up. Primary yellow. And we've got a lot of stuff going on over here. This is probably too bright, too yellow, but we can always darken it down. Um, we have a whole set of stuff in here that's just going to paint this whole background right through here. Make it merge there. Leave some areas come out down here. They actually come out like this. Get some uh, a big chunk of paint there that came from somewhere. And I'm gonna I want this to be light. I'm gonna put that the uh, fishing pole. I'm going to put a dark line there to represent that fishing pole. So I want to make this uh, light behind it. And I'm just painting around this fisherman's arms. Now I'm trying to save room for him and his face, his hat. And uh, as it gets down to the ground here, it gets darker and more grassy. But where he is, I want it to him to stand out. So I'm got to make sure I don't. Um, I could have could have uh, used masking fluid or tape to uh, mask him out, but I want to see if I can do it with this big brush. You may not want to do it this way. You may want to put masking fluid over this whole fisherman's head and his body and see if you can paint him in that way. But as I've painted around him with this big brush, you can see his head and his arms um, just by the way I'm using this brush. A lot of stuff along the bank here. It's yellows, it's got greens, it's got darks in it. Um, throw in some different shapes. This raw sand is a beautiful color. I have another line there that I've got to worry about, but let's just put in some stuff over there for now. Leave it a mess and we'll come back and clean it up. Um, I still think I got 
too much stuff going on over here that's pulling my eye out of the painting over there. I want your eye to focus in this area, so if I look at this area and I see this out of the corner of my eye, it's, it's too distinct, so I gotta either close down some of those white areas or darken it down a little more. Same over here, you wanna try to look at a painting to determine if you've got the eye going to the right place, look at your focal point, focus on it and see what you see um, out of the corner of your eye and if things are distracting and you see white spots or your eye starts wanting to go somewhere else in the painting that area is usually too light you need to do something to uh, fix it so we've got Tons of little reeds and stuff. I'm just using the uh, top of this brush now to just flick up in here, make a, some interesting shapes. On the top of this, it's looking pretty contrived. I'm going to be careful. I get too much. I don't want to have a worm. A worm is something that goes across your painting like this. No worms. Don't want worms. Let's close this end off over here. Connect it like that with some darks. <clears throat> I'm sort of reacting more to the painting now than I am the photograph. Uh, I'm sort of making sure that I don't have um, things pulling my eye to different places. And it's all about the composition and how it's looking now that I've got it in paint. Um, And a few more darks and let that run. Just see what that does. That'll give me some interesting abstract shapes there. <clears throat> All right. Um, still got more water around this guy here, this fisherman. See if I can put in a little bit of gray around him here. There's all kind of colors in this water. This water is... Uh, got grays, it's got the sky color reflecting in it. Um, it's got him reflecting in it right here. I got a big reflection I have to put there. Getting an interesting run there. I'll just let that go for a minute and see what happens to it. That stuff's running, because it's vertical, that stuff is running down the paper. And uh, I'm just gonna leave it. For now, I may want to fix it later, but let's put in some dark here and see if we can a little bit dark over here, maybe as well. If you go over it too many times, it turns to mud, so don't make it muddy. has got it in here. Let's see if we can pull something this way. And we can pull down some of the colors here. The water is a little smoother back here. Not much, but a little bit. Okay. Now, I know I'm going to have to change brushes to paint this fisherman. Uh, can't do him all with that big brush. So, Get one of my round brushes out here and uh, clean paper towel. Let's see if I can do this guy justice. Um, he's got a little blue shirt on and he's got a gray backpack and a sort of gray cap on. Looks like. Let me clean some of this stuff out of here. I've got gobs of dirt stuff that I don't want. Okay, get going. So I picked up my number eight round brush and uh, see what we can do with him on this fisherman. Um, 
start with this cap. His cap has a little bit of a couple tones of gray in it. I'm going to paint it all gray and then I'll come back and put a shadow on there that kind of highlights it. But let's put him all gray here. That's his hat. Um, his face. What do you do for faces? You can use ochre and uh, sometimes a little red to get a reddish orange, depending on his race. Put in a couple of things here that look like it's his face and neck. I'd be careful I don't uh, get him too light. You won't be able to see his features, so I'm going to darken him down just a little. I'm not painting a portrait of this guy, folks. Don't, uh, don't think you're going to see a Fabulous portrait. Um, his shirt is sort of like this. It's got a light area on top, which will dry lighter. Back arm is a little bit lighter already. I'll do that. Um, bottom part of his shirt is really darker. A shadow. That this part of his shirt is darker and painting behind his backpack here. All right, step back and look at that. Does that look like that's forming of a fisherman's body? Get a little darker paint here. I'm just using almost ultra pure ultra blue here. Under here, I want it to be darker a bit there, a bit here. We'll let that sort of run together and see what that does. Have to put in a couple of hands back here. I got uh, using crimson and uh, maybe even a little bit of this burnt sienna to sort of make you see his hands here. He's got one hand holding the sort of holding the fishing line. The other hand has got the cast going out. Um, his backpack is gray, as I said. Pick up a little, little bit of my uh, neutral tint and make it lighter over here, kind of like his hat. And even his pants are darker. I'm going to make those darker here. As they go into the water, we're going to make a reflection of him in the water right there. This side of his backpack is darker, so I'm going to put a little dark side on it. I'm sort of exaggerating. It's quite probably not that dark, but I want you to see it. And uh, because I'm painting vertically, I'm getting a run. Paper towel. Oh, what I do there? I hit the painting with my brush, so just go with it. Put in some darks in around here, right around his backpack. That will help highlight him even better. We actually have some logs laying over here. I may put those in as well. Um, his backpack is just a little light gray on the top. 
this gets very somewhat tedious, folks. I uh, hope it's not too boring for you, but... And his cap has a dark side or a little brim on it right here. So that you know that that's his hat. His face is just a little darker, a little shadow here. Very light shadow to sort of highlight his. Pull it down into his face, face colors. There we go. All right. Okay, that does look like a fisherman to me. Um, his fishing pole, let's see, I got an area back there in the water that's not filled in. I left a big white section here. Put that in and see if I can. Some of these whites, again, I'm going to take out and just make, gray them down a little bit so they're not quite so stark white. So I'm just putting a little bit of a gray tone over some of this, leaving it rough as I can. Um, in these areas in here, we have some rough texture of the water. So I'm going to sort of to sort of indicate that with a lot of dry brush. Dry brush will will help you uh, indicate roughness. The uh, rock area, this old bank area here, has a has a thousand rocks in it. You should be able to see that sort of stick out. And we have some logs that are sort of laying in here that uh, are sort of broken down trees and stuff. Throw a couple of those in here. Top of them are a little highlight. See if I can scrape out just a little top on them. Okay. Had another log or two laying over here. I'm just putting a sort of bluish gray color over this, wet over dry. And they have, some of them have things like branches sticking on them. I'll come back and put a scrape in a top there. Um, Some of them actually go underwater. Um, maybe some of them are actually brown, a little bit brown. Let's put another. Let's see if I can put another one in here. Come back and see if I can lighten the top by putting in just little scrapes on the top, rough it up, make it look like it's a log of some kind back there. Um, his shadow in the water. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to wet the water underneath him, clear water right in here, and pick up some of my, some of the color that is his, is his pants and shirt basically, and just sort of pop in a, some vertical things here that look like we got a reflection going on there. Take my thumb and do one of those and see if I can make it look like there. Usually the paper towel helps blur it just a little bit too. So thumb down, paper towel this way. Quick. If you need some uh, more shadow, come back and put it right at the where it comes out of the water there. Okay. All right, now one thing. About one thing left to do is this fishing pole, which is really sort of dark. It goes right in here. He's just completed a, 
a cast. So making that dark show up in front of the light. That's that work. A couple more shadows maybe around his neck here to kind of define him a little more. And his backpack. Okay. Stop and look at that. Um, I think I still need a little more dark around him. I've I got uh, I got him very well done there, but it's he's not standing out like I want. So let's put in some. Watch him pop to life here when I get done painting around him. Okay, starting to pop him out of there by negative painting around him. I don't want to just outline him. I don't want you to know that I just took the time to outline around him, so I'm going to make that blend in and merge with other parts of this painting. Otherwise, it's going to look like I put a halo around him, and I don't want that to happen. But by putting that dark around him like that, we're able to really see the, helps him stand out a lot more. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to what I wanted to show you today. A few more bush-like things going on here. <clears throat> now I could take a lot, of, lot more time on something like this, of course, but I try to do my paintings and as fast as possible and still give you a complete painting without having to uh, shorten it or, or double speed or any of that sort of stuff. I don't like doing that sort of thing. Um, let's just put a few things here that kind of help tie that together. I don't like that. It still looks kind of strange to me, this whole area right here. It's just a field of grasses and stuff, but it needs to have something else to sort of tie it together, I think. I don't like the rectangular shape of it. So I just created a bunch of abstract shapes right here by just putting that in. And I got rid of that rectangular looking yellow piece. Won't find that in a photograph, but you'll find it in a painting because I'm trying to get it abstracted down to a level that looks good on 14 inch paper. All right, um, let's see, what else can I do to this? I think I've just about worked it to death. Um, maybe just a few more spots of dry brush over here. See how this looks. Continue to show rough water. We want this water to be rough. So I'm just using the side of this brush and just sort of scraping it this way. Whatever comes off the brush comes off the brush. So it still shows that it's somewhat rough and uh, moving. All right, get back.
take another look. Okay, I've given a little depth. Uh, I've gone back and uh, put some mountains in there and put this little area in that shows a little more depth there. I put in several layers of trees. Um, and so the only thing I might add is if I can put some white uh, gouache on here after a while, I might put a little thing that represents his casting line out here in white. Uh, but I'm going to probably leave that alone for now and uh, think that's <clears throat> what I wanted to show you today. So I'll zoom back. However, I just remembered that some of you have asked me to put a mat around these paintings, so I just happen to have a mat here. Hold on. See if we can do that and give you an idea of what it will look like as a matted painting. I think there's some stickiness on the back of this mat, maybe, but I can uh, zoom in a little bit and let you see parts of the painting, what it looks like with a mat on it, and uh, even zoom in a little further, maybe on some of these areas, and just let you look at it. Uh, I have a little controller here. I can move the camera up and down. And I can move it left and right. So we'll go up into the trees and the mountains back there. Zoom in just a little more, maybe. Could have put a few birds in here. Uh, it might have been an interesting little thing, but anyway, that is my painting for today, <clears throat> and I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. Give me some comments. Ask me some questions. <clears throat> Please use the uh, YouTube uh, under the under the painting here down below. You can always uh, send me messages or ask me questions, um, and uh, I'll try to answer your, all your questions if I can. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do that. There'll be a little link on here for subscriptions, and uh, my website and information about the painting and the paints are in the. You'll see it below here, and uh, I hope that's. Good for you, and uh, I'll zoom back and say thank you for watching. Until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye. <laughs>